Now, I know you come to my channel for on the edge of your seat, top quality DCS content, and I say that tongue in cheek, but I thought I'd let you know that version one is now free. Uh, you can find that on the Eagle Dynamics uh, website under user files, and I thank them for hosting it. Um, there's not going to be any updates for that version one. It's pretty much deprecated. You won't find it anywhere. Uh, it's not going to ever appear on Steam again or whatever. But if you want to review it, have a look at it, you know, even use it because it's, it's in a usable form. Um, you can find it there. Uh, thank you to everyone who's downloaded it and tried it. I hope you like it. I hope it, you know, is fun and you're enjoying it and it makes your life easier or whatever. Uh, and thank you to everyone who's purchased a copy. Uh, so you guys will get all the updates from Steam and that kind of thing. So, uh, anyway, the reason for this video is the next update is going to be a long time because in my stupor, uh, I've actually put in the wrong variable somewhere. So what this means is there's going to be a big, uh, there's going to have to be a big rewrite. Now I've actually been quite impressed with my ability to to forward think and and plan and you know prepare for extra ideas and stuff that you know seem to be uh, quite quite um, easy to implement in some, in a lot of cases. However, uh, this one mistake I've probably made at 3 a.m. Uh, while well, I've been coding this uh, is going to cause issues. So the next update is going to take a long time. Now, basically what I'm trying to do, the thing that's caused all the problem is is in the fuel system, which uh, the next version is going to have, uh, you know, uh, an update to the fuel system so you can do some cooler stuff. So we're going to replace the timer because... I haven't actually used the timer myself either. Uh, I think once I set it up when I went for a fly just to kind of work out fuel and, uh, you know, and use a bit, of, a bit of paper and stuff and try and work things out in my head uh, as a training device. But I don't think anyone's really going to use that, uh, not even the novice guys now that I think about it. It was more for me. Um, but anyway, we're going to replace that with a... A uh, little button where you can set this start fuel. Now this will be used for, you know, people taking off from carriers. If you don't want to take off from, a, you know, you want to use minimum fuel, that kind of thing. Try and make it more realistic, uh, you know, with the weight and balance and all that kind of stuff. So you'll be able to take off, um, work out how far you need to go with the tanker. Now, I don't know how full on because I want to add all the, like make the tanker thing, you know, work really well uh but it'll probably just have a racetrack so i want to work out um a system so this is also going to add on top of it so you should be able to work out where the tanker is in its track uh and that should you know from zulu time uh at the start of the mission so you know this is going to take a little while for me to work that out because I don't know whether I want to add, like, I mean, it's obviously going to throw off, like, when the tanker goes home uh, and comes back. So I'm going to have to think about that. But I think I might have to just do the basics. Um, you know, this is where we expect him at that time. And the reason I'm putting this in, uh, I mean, the fuel system was going to get an overhaul anyway, because I wanted to do more with that rather than, you know, everything just being full tank. Um and, and, you know, running down from full tank and uh, that kind of thing. So uh, I, I'm, I won't make uh, loadouts though either. Like, as I said, if you, want, if you want an A10 with the extra fuel capacity, just build another A10 with, with a height, with the maximum fuel capacity or, you know, make another Hornet with, um, you know, two tanks, three tanks, one tank, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, that's how we're going to, get around that um so oh, sorry so uh i just knocked the microphone so hopefully it's not too you know loud if it's not i'll sound like an idiot just saying sorry for no reason so <laughs> i just thought i'd mention that but anyway uh so we're gonna have tanker tracks now the reason why we're doing that is i'm setting up my own mission which currently is impossible uh, and I've spent ages trying to do it in the mission planner because, uh, you know, trying to work it out right and get everything on, on time is, is a little bit difficult. But if I can get my software to do it, uh, then other people ha should have no problem setting up missions like um, take off with, you know, the minimum amount of fuel required, refuel, fly for ages, blow something up, come back, 
hit the tanker on the way back uh, and refuel. Uh, that can be quite difficult, you know. So, you, you, you know, I like the whole precision thing. So that's what I'm going for. Now, the mission I've got is not fun So at the moment. So I'm not putting it up. And the reason I'm not putting it up is because it can't be done uh, at the moment. Uh, I just, you know, it's an impossible bombing run Um you know, and then working out the timings for coming back and catching the um, the tanker. So that's what I want to do. I want to set up like a little tanker track, uh, the ability to to set it up between two points uh, and estimate from its ground speed where it would be from Zulu time uh, in the mission. So uh, that might make life a little bit easier for pre-planning, building the mission, uh, or, you know, even when you're playing online or whatever, if there's a particular tanker. See, this is the problem. Uh, knowing where he is uh, at, the, at the start of, like, when you hop in the server. So there's, there will still be an option to just drop a little tanker thing there so you can kind of, you know, work it out as you go. Um, and, and I mean tanker is just like a little spot so you just know where the tanker is on the server but obviously if you're joining the server halfway through the tanker's not going to be where it's supposed to be so uh, it's all you know all calculated on Zulu time so I don't know how I'm going to work out that complex kind of stuff because I, I would like to add it to make it you know fun but then I've got to worry about how you guys enter it in I don't want to make it too complex for you guys I want to make it easy so you're actually enjoying the experience of you know, setting up the servers and <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and I say that because I, I don't know if many people actually understand what, what, what this does. I mean, it is just an EFB. It doesn't, um, you know, integrate with anything. Uh, so, you know, when I say set up servers, what I mean is that a lot of servers has, have different radio frequencies for airfields. So you can customize your own, uh, like, um, uh, map if you like so when you mouse over a, an airfield it'll give you the details for that airfield on a particular server so if you fly two or three different servers and they've got different frequencies and that kind of thing you can you know because some some are human some aren't some use srs that kind of thing you can set up a server which will work like an efb for the server so that's basically what what this does is you can save like a nevada map with all your particular things and you can save a caucus map with all your particular things um and and go from there so there's no integration just for those who who are curious but i appreciate everyone who's downloaded it to to try out the free version if you're curious go have a look uh and i and thank you to everyone who's purchased the um the steam version and um yeah just uh, thank you i guess for for enjoying it you know try it out if you if you like i mean uh it's there for goodwill for the for the flight sim community and i hope you enjoy it thanks for watching